happening now in the jobs market? Nearly 15 million people are out of work in this country. It is certainly tough out there. We don't need to see that, but it's tougher than what this number actually shows. Add 1.2 million Americans to that number. That's a new record high of discouraged workers in this country. They're not even counted in the monthly jobs report because they're not considered part of the labor force since they're not working or looking for work. Uh, what will actually ignite this job market. Let's ask our panel today. Gotham Gagwani is the CEO and co-founder of Simply Hired. David Sampson is a former Deputy Secretary of Commerce. And we have Fox News contributor Adam Lisinski. He is the senior editor at large at Fortune magazine. So Adam, let's start with you. What will ignite this labor market? I'm afraid the only thing that will ignite it is time. We, we shouldn't be looking for any explosion or ignition, and we need to try to find the good news um, where we can take it. So, for example, the fact that the private sector created jobs, created some 60,000-plus jobs, which was only slightly less than the whisper number that economists expected, is a glimmer of hope that this economy has not stalled out completely. It's not going in reverse. It is creating private sector jobs, and we shouldn't see a huge surprise that government sector jobs are in decline as the census lays people off and the stimulus money which helped create jobs isn't around anymore. David, do you buy that? We just need to be a little bit more patient, let time just kind of process through this recession. No, Jenna, I'm afraid that I, I don't. I think that the policy uncertainties that have been injected in the economic equation by the administration and by Congress have made consumers very, very nervous. Consumers account for over two-thirds of the U.S. economy, and it's kept businesses on the sidelines uh, when it comes to business expansion decisions, capital investment decisions, or hiring decisions. And unless uh, there's some resolution to those policy uncertainties that are out there and a clear recognition uh, on the part of Washington that it's the private sector that is going to lead this recovery and not the public sector. Uh, I think you're going to see that nervousness on the part of consumers and businesses sideline continue into the future and I think that's indicated uh, even the Fed and all of the other government economists are uh, downsizing their uh, projected GDP growth for the second half of this year. Well, Gotham, you're perfect to ask this question, too, because you're part of an organization that uh, looks for where the jobs are. So why don't you give us some context here? Compared to maybe last year at the same time, how are we looking? Sure. I, I, I think there's no doubt that what we're seeing with the economic recovery is that the job growth is at best anemic. In the near term, I think the only thing we're going to see in terms of job growth are the, are the seasonal jobs, where retailers expect to add about 550 to 650,000 jobs over the holidays. The good news there is that the big retailers are putting up some great numbers. So you see, for example, Best Buy putting up 20, 29,000 new jobs, uh, Toys R Us 45,000 jobs, Macy's 65,000 jobs. But the fact is that we had a very, very tough recession, and I think we're in for a pretty long recovery here. So, Adam, if you had the chance, what would you tell the president? What's your advice to the president? Just to stay back, let time, just kind of let him go through his, his administration? Or is there something that needs to be done here again? Well, it's interesting. If, if you listen to the remarks that the president did make this morning, he, he clearly is getting the message that he needs to talk about people, right? So he said, I see the numbers. There's some encouraging things in the numbers, but that has nothing to do with people, and I care about people. And this really is about atmospherics. You know, to David's point, I, I, I really don't, I really disagree that there's this feeling that uncertainty is what's holding back consumers. It's interesting political rhetoric, but there isn't any evidence to support that. So let me consumers just clear this jump in there just to clear it up though for for some of our viewers that might be feeling uncertain or feeling something about this recession what would you call it then Adam if it's not uncertainty that's causing people to feel a little bit nervous about our economy they're, they're, they're uncertain about a lot of things. They're not uncertain about the policies that are coming out of Washington. They know that taxes on the wealthiest people are going up. They know there's going to be health care, uh, new health care insurance provisions coming down the road. That doesn't change the fact that we're not making 17 million cars a year anymore, that people have their homes still in foreclosure, and that that needs to work through the system. My point is, these things can't be solved immediately, and nobody should expect them to. Well, David, though, consider the timing, though. We're right ahead of the midterms. Have we politicized? So consider the timing, though. We're right ahead of the midterms. Have we politicized this recession to the point where we're not really talking about the economy anymore because there's just so much going on? 
Well, Jenna, my concern is that we've created an environment right now in this country and in Washington that uh, leads to such risk aversion on the part of, of businesses. I mean, every business failure uh, now out there is criminalized. Success uh, is, is not uh, uh, celebrated and, and rewarded. And so there's just a tremendous amount of, of risk aversion in our economy right now, and, and that's reflected in all the money that's sitting on the sidelines. And, and my concern is that unless we get back in balance and realize that you can't love employees and demonize employers at the same time and the people who form capital and invest capital, that, that we're looking for a, a prolonged period of very subpar economic uh, growth. And I don't know where uh, you know, Adam lives, but where I travel around the country, there is a general shared consciousness uh, among the people that I talk to uh, that our economy is in real difficult shape right now and people are very hesitant about making long-term commitments. Uh, and uh, by the way, Adam, well I have to jump. I'm sorry, Adam, we're going to have to wrap it up, but Adam does live in my hometown of, of San Francisco, David, so we have to be careful about that. Come on. Uh, gentlemen, we really appreciate it. We have some breaking news and we're going to have to run to that, but we hope to have you all back soon. Thank you so much. Thank you much.